The carbon button microphone was invented by Thomas Edison in 1878 in his quest to find a practical transmitter for the developing telephone system. In 1912, Western Electric developed the WE360 single button carbon microphone with the 4A horn attached as a high efficiency transmitter along with a horn type loudspeaker to use as a paging system between the test desk and the frame room in a telephone exchange. This is one of the first uses of a microphone for communications outside the telephone system. The microphone I am speaking on now is the Magnavox ST4. In 1918 Magnavox developed the ST4 4 button carbon microphone which with an 18 inch cord loudspeaker and 6 tube amplifier formed part of its telemegaphone sound system. In September 1919 two Magnavox ST4 microphones with horns fitted on the mouthpiece and suspended above the dais were the basis of a sound system used in an address by President Woodrow Wilson to 50,000 people at San Diego Stadium in California. On the 15th of June 1920, Nellie Melba became the first voice to broadcast live by Marconi at the opening of his 15 kilowatt transmitter in Chelmsford, England. She began her half hour recital with Home Sweet Home and ended with the national anthem. The microphone used was a GEC Bill Connor transmitter adapted with a mahogany flare and a crude bird cage type suspension. This type of microphone was used by the BBC up until 1923. The double button push-pull or differential microphone was invented by Charles Haskins in 1881, painted in 1883 and it was assigned to Western Electric. The double button became the favoured microphone in early broadcasting because of its ability to give more output level while reducing inherent noise produced in early carbon microphones. In 1922, George Lum invented the now legendary Western Electric 1A and 1B housing, which with a double button carbon transmitter suspended inside soon became the industry standard in broadcasting around the world. But the sound quality of carbon microphones in broadcasting was always poor until the arrival of the Reese or Rice microphone. This commentary is on the Reese shown, and as can be heard, the quality is very acceptable. Eugene Reese was an engineer and entrepreneur whose laboratory was investigating a way of recording sound and improving its quality in the infant movie industry. It was here in the early 1920s a young George Neumann of Neumann Microphone fame working for Reese discovered what became the Reese microphone. Neumann later recalled, Reese was out of the country and while he was away I tried a few experiments. I sprinkled some powdered carbon onto a marble slab, inserted a couple of electrodes and spoke into it. You could hear something but the low frequencies were missing. Then I stretched a rubber diaphragm across it and suddenly the low frequencies were restored. Marconi procured the rights to manufacture the Reese microphone in England in the mid-1920s, with AWA manufacturing its own version in Australia around the same time. In 1932, three AWA Reese microphones were used at the opening of the Sydney Harbour Bridge by the Governor of New South Wales, Sir Philip Gain. I am privileged to read to you the gracious message which the King has sent to his people of New South Wales on this great occasion. His Majesty's message is as follows. I have learnt with great pleasure that the Sydney Harbour Bridge has now been completed and I desire to congratulate my people of New South Wales and all who have been concerned for the planning and construction of the bridge on the successful conclusion of the enterprise. Today, which sees the formal opening of this magnificent triumph of engineering skill will be memorable in the annals of New South Wales. The Reese microphone became very popular with the home builder because of their simplicity and many examples still exist today. Another popular Reese microphone used in Australia was the Philips 4043. This track is recorded on the one pictured. Recently while in Canberra I recorded George Barlin on the Philips reminiscing about his years at 2CA. 
When I first got into broadcasting as a 16-year-old in 1933, this was the microphone that was used. It was the only microphone that QCA had at that time, and it served the station very well for many, many years. It brings back many happy memories to me.